Next, I will show how to connect one of these IPT2 Chinese uh, H bridges. This has um, PDS7960 uh, MOSFETs on it. This is supposed to be rated at 43 amps or something. These Chinese ones definitely won't do that much since the MOSFETs are on top here. And there's no metal under this and the heatsink is on the other side just pressed with these screws and there's not even a paste or anything between these so this heatsink you can basically remove I guess <laughs> it seems to work as fine but if you want to make them actually handle some power you need to modify it so the heatsink is on the right side and actually doing some cooling and then you are going to need this Arduino, Mega or Uno or whatever is your choice of microcontroller. I like these since they have lots of options and they are re relatively cheap. This is Chinese one because all the fonts and the board color is off so this is probably like 5 euros. Uh, all we need to connect this is um, basically uh, power for the board itself the ground for the board then we need um, enable the pins for forward and reverse those you can just tie together and just uh, feed 5 volts into it and then we have two last pins here that we control the direction with pulse width modulation so basically 5 five um, wires you need or you can even tie together the input voltage to the enable pins if you want to but I like to have them separate so if I need to do something that requires to power this off then I can do that but anyways I'm gonna now solder these wires here These are just uh, cheapo Chinese uh, jumper wires for the breadboards. I use them quite often like this, so I just solder them all. They're cheap enough, so you don't have to worry about them being expensive. And it's easy to just block the other end. Of course, I could just um, buy ones that have the female end on the other side, but I don't care that much. There you go, there's the power and the ground. Then I'm going to solder on this wire for the enable bins. And here I have bended the two pins together so I only need one wire here. Then next, I'll solder on the other of the PVM signals. There you go. And the last wire, the other PVM. If you are doing some actual um, project, I don't recommend you to <laughs> solder it like this or bend the pins on the board, but I got these in bulk and they were cheap, so I don't care. This is just for demonstration. So there's the power. It goes to top left corner now. There's a minus going a left lower corner. Then the most right pins up and down these are for the control signal and the next pins left is the enable pin the last two pins that are empty are for um, over current signal so you, if you want to have a, a over current protection thingy you can just 
use those to not fry your board, I guess. If they even work on this Chinese one, I have no clue. And connecting it to this Arduino is pretty straightforward. Uh, plus you put in the 5 volts of the Arduino. Actually, I'm gonna need a piece of breadboard now that I use. I use this two wires. So I'll put the 5 volts in, which is labeled here VCC, and the enable pin in the same slot there. And I'm gonna use one more, one more cable here to take the board power from the board. Now that's all the power connected. Then there's the ground. And that goes to ground pin of your board. Then you can put these on whatever um, pin you want to, except it needs to be a PVM capable slot. Most boards say, at least Arduinos, on the next to the pins there's a text that says PVM. So any of those pins, I'll put these to six and seven here. And that's the control side of the board. Now it should be all wired up for usage. And these these headers here, they are uh, marked somehow. <laughs> oh yeah, the markings are on the bottom. So from the left is uh, motor minus, motor plus, battery plus and battery mi minus. So battery minus and plus is pretty obvious you use your voltage source on that i think this can handle 24 volts and should be working if i'm not wrong from six volts or so upwards and um, yeah that's that's pretty much it that's all done of course you need some program on the arduino but that's basically how you connect it you put the motor wires on the here and um, battery wires and you're good to go. So now I have hooked up all the wires for the motor and the battery. I have these two leads coming here from the battery. It's just a normal uh, 12 volts motorcycle battery or whatever. And I have hooked up the motor wires their correct spots one is kind of loose i have the oscilloscope on the minus of the oscill oscilloscope is on the minus of the um, control and the uh, probe itself is now on the pin six which is uh, um, reverse on the motor i have also hooked up this uh, potentiometer that allows me to change the speed and direction now of this windshield or no, this is not windshield wiper motor, but it's basically the same. This is uh, from power windows, but it does exactly the same thing. There's uh, the warm gear here inside and only thing is just tiny bit smaller. Actually some uh, like aftermarket tractor windshield wiper motors are the exact same size than this. Oh yeah, it seems some wire is a little bit loose since you can see <laughs> the bars jumping there and the motor is trying to turn uh, the uh, potentiometer is pretty straightforward you put plus and minus on the both edges doesn't matter which way well it affects which way is plus and minus when you turn it but if you want to have it all the way around you can code it differently or just turn the wires it doesn't matter and the center wire goes to the analog zero now on my arduino and the code is now <coughs> made to uh, calculate the voltage between five and zero voltage you can also um, make it so it works with three but it doesn't matter it's just I usually use the 5 volts since the Arduino usually 
everything you do with it is 5 volts. So let me demonstrate. Oh, remove my hand. Now it's turning slowly. The noise it makes uh, uh, is because of... Here, now I'm turning the other way around, so it is actually probing the one that is now pulsing. This pulse width, how many pulses it has during a second, is why it's keeping this noise. Because it has these um, dips here between, it doesn't have any voltage. So, up here is 5 voltage, and here is 0. So, it... Um, cuts off the voltage fast. That's how it regulates the speed, not by adjusting the voltage. Well, average now changes with the width of the pulse, but it's always 5 volt pulses, or it is 5 volt pulses in the control. Of course, the motor gets the 12 volts from the battery. And as you can see, when I raise the speed, it's more and more on until it's basically completely on except we have uh, <laughs> still something with loose wires or something here but you, you will see that and you can change the speed by turning it different way and it has some decent power also I can't of course show it because everything is like this on the table but next video is probably gonna be a little more uh, detailed on the torque side and how this performs like now if you turn it real slow it doesn't have any torque because we don't have any control except it um, lowers the voltage but on the next video we are going to turn this one to servo motor so it knows where it is so we are going to add another potentiometer here which turns with the output shaft to um, turn it in different angles and then we can implement PID controller and then if it doesn't reach the goal in set time it will ramp up more and more um, PVM to it so it will try harder and harder to reach the right point but as it is now it, this would be completely useful for something like radio controlled uh, tank or car whatever you like to do but this is all for today and thanks for watching see you later